All right. Welcome, everybody, to our FinTech Fridays live podcast, and it's live. First time ever uh, I'm going live. I'm not going to lie either. I'm a little bit nervous. That's why you had two 30-second countdowns. Um, I am excited to be here. I've got a star-studded uh, guest list here, and, and we're not going to waste time. We're going to get into this because there is so much to unpack. Please welcome Rebecca Richardson, the mortgage mentor from You Mortgage, Min Win with What's a Mortgage, and coming to us live from Maui, Josh Dobson, mortgage dad of three from Blueprint Home Loans. Thank you all for joining today. Thanks, Brian. How's it going? Us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Now, this is a this will be a, a little bit of a, a logistics challenge. You know, having four of us on a podcast, so we're going to do our best to to kind of stay organized. Um, I want to start by asking each each of you to just tell our audience when, how and when, and maybe why you started this journey on social media. Rebecca, let's let's start with you. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> Not yet. All right, we'll come back to Rebecca. Let's start with Josh up out in Maui. Nothing like starting your first live podcast with one technical difficulty. All um, good. Thank you for having me. And uh, it, I'm excited to be here because I'm surrounded by two other people that I follow uh, and have been following. So um, I started this journey about a year ago. Um, decided that um, with the change in the market, I was going to have to do something different. Uh, in the old model of chasing leads from real estate agents. Um, so I made the choice that I was gonna go after the consumer directly. Um, and in doing so, um, I realized that the best way to reach and to communicate and bring uh, customers to me was through education. Um, so we focus on education first, um, and that education then leads people into uh, coming to us and asking us questions um and getting the the information they need to be able to buy a house um so it's worked out really well for us i love it let's, let's try rebecca again how about now yeah we got yay. you yay yay for technology i said i was fintech i didn't say that i was tech <laughs> <laughs> so i started in 2017 using video in emails and um primarily just for kind of evergreen type topics to send to clients or to embed an email because we were losing kind of that face-to-face interaction. And then from there, it progressed on to Facebook in 2018, Instagram 2019, and then TikTok late 2019. And men, what about you, man? Uh, I started it. First of all, I was, um, you know, I'm very excited to see Rebecca and uh, Josh on because I do follow them and I follow them for a while before I'm like, oh, I'm going to be on with them. So excited to see you guys on. Uh, so I started in 2017. So in 2017, um, I had a mortgage company and of course we were funding about 70 million and one by one, each loan officer kept leaving. And in 2017, uh, I went back in to try to originate myself. It was just a lot harder. I had to compete against Zillow. Also I had to go out there and get realtors to send me business again. And I was tired of paying into their Zillow, spending money on lunches, running around, doing open houses. Like there's gotta be a better way. And I saw that Ty Lopez video back in 2017, and that sparked June 2017, where I started social media. So I, I went on Facebook and um, Facebook first, and then Instagram, and I started my journey there. And I got into uh, TikTok in 2020. Since then, I haven't looked back. I love it. So I mean, Josh, you're the you're the newest one into it, but um, all three of you. So I've been tracking kind of this this financial influencer, finfluencer space specific to kind of real estate finance. So mortgage and real estate. And I've been paying attention for the last year, let's say. And then maybe in the last 90 to 120 days, I've really been focused on it. Like, you know, I had to download TikTok. I'll admit it. I didn't have it. <laughs> um, and so I've been following all these great uh, content providers. And what I noticed about a month ago, a little bit over a month ago, is you three were at the top of my feed, like on all the channels, right? So that kind of spurred this this idea of uh, financial fitness as a kind of a hook. You guys were already doing that with your your uh, content. And I thought, well, let's get them all together and, and kind of share um, 
And so in the, and since I've put this podcast together, I've seen, you know, there's even more folks. I'm sure you're following mm-hmm. all the top players and the, all the top players are following you guys. On the, on the scroll, I've got each of your handles. So if the audience that's watching wants to check you guys out, make sure you do that. Let's, let's talk a little bit about scale. Because one of the things that kind of has blown me away as I've been studying this space, in, in particular the three of you, is the following that you guys have. I mean, collectively, I did some back of the napkin math. It's like over 600,000 followers between the three of you. Crazy. Um, Josh, tell us, tell us what your kind of audience looked like in, in total across all platforms. Um, so I think I was doing the math on it. Um, somewhere about 120,000 on IG. I have about 45,000 on TikTok. Um, YouTube and some of the other ones, it's a little bit less. So I'd say all in, I'm probably somewhere around 170,000 followers between all the different platforms. And and while while we've got you, like, I'm curious, you know, somebody that's starting out, it's going to be frustrating when you start and you have zero. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I was there. Yeah. And, you know, what's like that first, what was that first milestone that you hit that you were like, oh man, this might be something. What was that number for you? Uh, for me, actually, it was just getting a video that actually went, to a certain level. Um, so we all hear about the different types of viral videos that are out there. Um, and I think it was a, it was a TikTok post and we hit 500,000 views on it. And at that point in time, I realized that there was an opportunity here and there was a message that needed to be presented. And that's kind of what catapulted this whole push forward into really growing the audience. So man, what, what does your audience look like, your followers? Am I saying that Actually, right, I, by the way? I got a new, a new jump recently. Uh, I, bought, I, have, I got about 131 uh, on Instagram. My TikTok, actually, like, the heavens just opened, and I got 30,000 followers in a week. Wow. So I'm at 91,000 right now. I was like, whoa, I didn't wow. think this still happened. I thought that was a, I've heard the legendary stories where, like, that one video goes viral, and all of a sudden, you go viral. And I didn't go viral yet, but I got, you know, I jumped. I was at 60,000. I jumped 30,000 in a week. So I got 90,000 and 10,000 on YouTube. Nice. And, and again, for you, what was that early in your early experience? I watched a, uh, an interview you did a little bit ago and you, you talked about um, how you don't enjoy the process. <laughs> I oh, thought correct. that was pretty interesting. Um, what was that first milestone that you hit where you're like, okay, maybe there's something here. So in 2017, um, when I started, I posted twice a day on Facebook and YouTube and Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I did that for 10 months. And then I made a video. It's called uh, my VOE video where I do this little VOE day. I'm like, give me a V, V, I got your V, I got your V, give me an O. So before they were all digital VOEs, and that video, it didn't go viral, but I went, I would I was averaging 100, 200 views, and that one hit 2,000 on uh, Facebook. So I turned into an ad and I didn't spend that much, but back then Facebook was cheap. I was spending like 50 bucks a day. I hit 2 million views in a couple months and that, all right, I'm onto something because now on top of the views, you know, since I was still in the early stages in 2017 or it was still early stages, buyers came in like crazy. I'm like, okay, there's something here. Wow. Love it. Rebecca, let's, let's kind of, you've been kind of, I think going at it the longest and you started kind of with a different entry point in, right? Your use case right. for creating content was different. Yeah. So I, um, I did, like I said, kind of Facebook and, and onto that and then really just switched over to TikTok one because Gary V said to, and <laughs> two, because, you know, it seemed like an easy way to edit videos for vertical because I was shooting everything horizontal and, you know, certainly wanted it to be more mobile friendly. So that's all the reason I got on TikTok really was just to do that. But I'm around 145 there and a little over 12 on Instagram and then between Facebook and all the others. So all in, I'm around 166. Yeah. It's amazing. Like I said, yeah my back of the napkin math uh, played out there because I think I, you guys are well over the 600 K uh, that I said. So for you, Rebecca, what was that kind of, okay, here we are. We got something here. What was that moment for you? What was that milestone achievement? Well, I did, I hit, um, I hit 10,000. It took me eight months to get to 10,000. And so, you know, obviously being, being a math girl, I like round numbers. Uh, so that <laughs> felt significant at that point. Um, but really just when people started to, respond and have real questions, right? Not just like, oh, that's funny, but really, you know, getting into more of some of the technical stuff and thinking, oh, okay, they're telling me exactly what they want to hear about. This is great. Um, I just need to answer their, you know, answer their questions and give the people what they want. (laughs) Yeah. So 
there was a little bit of strategy when I kind of assembled this uh, this dream team here, right? Because the three of you really take different approaches in terms of, you know, the the content at the end of the day, if you boil it down, it's the same content, right? We're, we're talking about, let's face it, guys, mortgage is not that exciting. We're talking about, you know, mortgages and all the, the rules and regs that go behind it. But each of you have kind of created your own kind of persona that I'm guessing uh, that if I were to look at your followers and your audience, that's that persona is what's gravitating them to you and vice versa, right? Is, is that, am I thinking about that the right way, Josh? Yeah. I mean, I was actually just on a podcast not too long ago and we talked about it. And one of the things I explained to him is, is that you just have to be yourself uh, because yourself is somebody that someone else can relate to. Um, so as long as you're engaging as yourself and you're being honest and true, um, I feel like the people that are going to engage you, follow you, um, and watch you are the same people that are developing a relationship with you because of who you are. And Rebecca, you, I, I think that definitely, it feels, it feels like as I watch your channel and your content, uh, it, it resonates with your audience, I'm guessing, right? Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, like Josh said, it's, you know, there, people always talk about being authentic, be authentic on social. And I think that that's getting a little played out because it, yes, it's about authenticity, but it's really about just delivering a ton of value consistently and then being unique, you know, and that's, and that's where it comes back to, I think the auth authenticity factors in is nobody can be you better than you. So being able to bring your whole self so people can get to know you and you're not just a robot. Cause like you said, mortgages can be pretty, pretty dense and boring. <laughs> um, so being able to lighten it up a little bit and, um, and bring some personality to it goes a long way because I think that that lowers the, the stress level of, you know, engaging with a financial professional talking about these really big topics. It's just, I'm just a regular person. This is just what I know really well. And so let's have a conversation. Love it. The, uh, so I've got, I got, uh, somebody on, on, uh, on the comments says they, they thought TikTok was just for dancing. Um, who, okay. A lot so of people say that. <laughs> so here is, uh, this is our first live question from the audience. Thank you, Nate, for this question. Now, very subjective, of course, but show of hands, who is the best dancer on TikTok? Uh, I'm uh, going to say men. Bye. Yeah. I don't all the time. I'm not going to step up on that one. <laughs> now, men's got moves, man. You, uh, you, you're a very um, fluid. You're fluid on your your videos, right? So, what I notice when you're when I'm seeing your content, there's there's arms and stuff moving all around and a lot of expression. Was that something that's very natural for you, is or is, did you kind of kind of work yourself into that that kind of persona? I think it's easier for me to talk to control my pace. I think if I don't, if I have to keep my hands down, so I, I'm very monotone. So if I talk and I move my hand, I'm able to control my pace. I am a fast talker. So when I use my hand, I kind of – like when I go out, I'm breathing out. I'm breathing back in. I slow it down because when I was talking really fast, people couldn't get what I was saying and they would just pass me by. My content has improved recently um, because I've been slowing down and using my hands more to talk and controlling the pace. I love that. And, and was that something that you kind of developed on your own or did you have some kind of feedback that, that folks were giving you? I'm, I'm learning this thing right now. Guys. Uh, you guys are teaching me as we go. <laughs> I, I just watching other people. And then eventually there's this guy I follow. Uh, he's a, he's a public speaker. His name is like uh, Vin, Vin, Vin. Vin. Yeah. Vin. Yeah. He's uh, he's from Australia and he teaches uh, talk. I took his course and that helped out a lot. And of course, I went. Um, I'm in California, and there's a speech school down the street from me. And I just took a couple speech courses. You know, I'm always about trying different things to try to improve my game. And I just want to point out that this is not a, a political podcast. the The red hat that that Min is wearing is make affordables, <laughs> make mortgages affordable again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, make mortgages affordable again. <laughs> Just he's want to he's make going sure, to the principle right? of social media is just is is attention is half of the game. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Rebecca I just don't want my little podcast to get canceled for the wrong reasons. That's all. I'm just yeah. trying, to, <laughs> trying to keep keep it real here. So, uh, Rebecca, as you kind of study this space, are there? How do you stay on top of the the trends, right? Because I 
I want to I want to dive a little bit into kind of the the, the metrics in terms of I've, the audiences have heard you guys talk about videos going viral and there's mm -hmm. probably some other kind of key metrics. But how do you keep tabs on what's what's important today? And then how do you incorporate that into your content tomorrow? Sure. So part of the reason that I enjoyed TikTok so much is because you do get so much feedback since it is a video, you know, immediately it, it helps to establish that connection faster. So you get the comments, you know what people are asking, what they care about. Um, but honestly, a lot of it is just, it, what do I like, right? What do I see that captures my attention or I find interesting or, or kind of hits one of those major buckets? It makes me laugh or it informs me. And I make content that I would like and that I have fun making. So I do enjoy the process. And so for me, it's just, you know, I, I, it's, it's my creative outlet. Um, and it was kind of my creative lifeline during 2020 when things were so crazy right. in the industry is it was something I could do, you know, uh, board in the house, in the house board. But, um, you know, just kind of have that that creative outlet and it's just continued. Man, what 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 kind of resources are you paying attention to as it relates to those kind of key key metrics and drivers? Uh, for me, I uh, I am very news driven and numbers driven. So I want the audience you know, to reach through to me who are very news driven as well. So people who are on top of the news are, I, they tend to kind of have a little more of a foundation on finance. So when they do reach out to me, they're a higher quality viewer uh, to like, you know, qualify. So I build my content around who I want to reach out to me. And by making that content, I avoid the ones that I don't want, like, I, I'm, I'm going to still help everybody, but I'm trying to reach out to people that can pretty much make a decision now. Makes sense. A lot of us are, you know, or we're in the business where we need production now and also production in the future. And I'm, I'm building the content based on that. And by talking about specific things, I drive that content. Like I talk about 401ks all the time because as someone who has money in their 401k has good credit, they have their wage earner makes our lives easier, right guys on W2 loans. So I create the content based on who I want reaching out to me. Totally makes sense. Josh, what, what are the, what you're the newest at this, like, what have you, what were you studying to kind of, you know, perfect or hone in on your, on your game as you entered this space? So let's be completely honest. I was watching men and I was watching Rebecca. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's so for me, men alluded to it earlier when he talked about <clears throat> learning from Ben on how to speak. Um, there's a lot of, you know, everybody tells us that TikTok is a dancing platform. But if you actually go and spend the time, you're actually going to get the information that you seek out. So mm -hmm. when you're on these platforms and you're watching videos, what you're watching is what's going to be in your feed. And there's just a ton of information. So if you want to go learn how to dance, start watching dancing videos on TikTok. If you want to learn about mortgages, you're going to watch men, you're going to watch Rebecca, and hopefully you're going to watch me. But the idea is when you are looking for something and you want information, it's a great place for you to, I mean, especially with the search bar, um, you can put in information and that information will take you to videos that will give you that, what you're looking for. And so what we typically do is we build our content around what we want people searching for. Um, so just like men said, he's looking for the, the higher end clientele for me. If you notice you go and put first time home buyer, you're going to see a lot of my videos because a lot of our content is geared around first time home buyers, understanding what it's like, or what, it, what it takes to be a homeowner. So kind of that's where we gain, that's kind of where we focus our energy. Love it, totally makes sense. So one of the, one of the questions that, that I have, and I, I'm imagining there's a, thousands of loan officers out there that haven't yet kind of started to go down this, this path, which is kind of a head scratcher why they haven't, but that's another story. Um, how Rebecca, let's start with you. How, like, what does your day look like? You, you have your day job, which is originating mortgages, right? And then how much time do you wrap around, you know, creating content, managing your, your, the platforms and your audience and, and answering all the questions that come in? What does that look like for you? You had cut out. Who who do you want to go first? Oh, that'll be you. Sorry, that's you, Rebecca. <laughs> I was going to say it froze for a second. Uh, I have two main processes for how I create 
content. So I, had, I do have some that are scheduled that really I have a whole content calendar that I work off just because that keeps me organized and make sure that at least I'm hitting that base minimum of being able to show up and, and showing everybody's feeds across, you know, across the different platforms. So from that standpoint, that's a little bit more structured. Other than that, then it does, you know, like Men said, it's, it's paying attention to the news, paying attention to what people are talking about right now. So then the content that I make that isn't, um, you know, that isn't meant to be evergreen, whether that's a trend or whether that's, you know, a talking head video that's just giving somebody an update on where the market is right now or what's going on. That typically looks like having the idea. I, I have to group, I have to task my things. I don't, I don't do start to finish. Um, so it's a lot of times it's just, I collect my ideas. I'll typically batch shoot, you know, four to six videos or so. A lot of times it happens on the weekend because that's when I can have some quiet time to do it. And then I'll, and then I'll edit them and really, really then just have them staged up, you know, so I'm posting once or twice a day um, as those, you know, as those ideas come out. So as long as they're still timely, but then I've got a little bit more organization around them and, um, and I'm not trying to figure out at four o'clock in the afternoon what I'm going to post for the day. That's a little stressful. Yeah, yeah it is. Man, what, what about you? I think of the three of you from where, from where I sit, you've got maybe, maybe the biggest team kind of supporting you. Is that fair to say? Correct. Correct. Uh, so we are a mini army of, uh, between loan officers, processors, uh, editors, and videographers. I think we're sitting on like 30, 40 people. Whoa. Uh, 30, 40 people. And then, uh, so I have, so how my day works is, um, I day trade pretty much from six in the morning to 11 as I'm waiting for my, uh, watch for my move to happen. I I'm on all the, I rotate between all the news articles. So I go from housing wire to zero hedge. I know people, some people don't like zero hedge, hedge, uh, wall street. And I rotate, I rotate, um, uh, core logic, Black Knight, I took the I take the data company so I can see foreclosure because I'm looking for a troll and trolls are looking for me. So I'm making sure I'm on top of my data as I'm trading. So from morning till 11, I do that. Uh, Mondays, uh, I gather all the notes of all the trends, all the data I want to do on Mondays for two hours. I script everything with my team, uh, uh, with one of my, uh, my, uh, my social manager. And then on Tuesdays, I film everything uh, for the week. And, but the only time I uh, ate, AM to 8.15, I do my morning market update, and then, then uh, my editor edits it and puts it out at 12. Sometimes I hit refresh waiting for rates to update because sometimes <laughs> rates don't update. I'm like, dude, I don't want to put that rate out. And then yeah. you see the bomb drop. You're like, oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm overcharging. And we're like, oh, my gosh, rates went up. Like, oh, my gosh. No, I look like the jerk. Like, I'm bait and switching. So sometimes that happens. And then from 12 to 4, um, I run an ad for a VIP call. So every 15 minutes, if there's a VIP call, I take it. If someone's on the fence... I get them back on the phone. We do something called uh, proof of life. We'll mass text them all for the people who haven't responded. Hey, Brian, I did a car. This is man. I did a cartwheel. Made me think about you. Ha ha ha. If they laugh, we get them back on the phone. Okay. So uh, we do that up till five and then pretty much my day is done at five. Crazy. Josh, I, I've, I've kind of had a little sneak peek behind the scenes on what you're doing. Why don't you share kind of your, your reality? Yeah. So uh, unlike men, uh, it's me and one other person kind of handling everything. Um, and, uh, you know, where my source of income comes from is closing loans. So I spend a majority of my time working on loan origination, um, and dealing with the files. Um, but we talk out, I mean, we, we block out about two hours every day, um, for either brainstorming content ideas, batch filming. Um, and then the editing is done by my editor and typically that's done, um, two times a day. So she'll go in, she'll have videos, she'll go edit those videos and then post them. Um, and so while working on loans, um, I will spend maybe 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon uh, going through comments and DMs and returning those. Um, and then, you know, obviously engaging those and pushing those back. But a majority of my time is spent actually in files, whether it's uh, the applications that we have coming in or it's the leads that we have coming in all that's kind of built most of my day um we are hiring we're looking for loan officers that can handle uh lots of applications um and want to close loans because uh, that's one of the things one of the advantages of doing this i'm sure the other two will allude to it um we have a lot of people who reach out to us who want to become homeowners and so we have a lot of applications coming in awesome so what uh if, if the audience didn't pick up on it, there's three pretty unique strategies and processes that are happening. And I think what 
what for me being you know the the super novice in the space it gives me hope that it you know and and mike frosty is listening or watching so basically hit the red button right that's kind of the the to get started in the space you you gotta um you gotta hit the button and you just gotta you gotta put yourself out there and that's a little nerve-wracking uh one thing i want to kind of drill into next if we can is um the uh oh, are we getting a countdown? I'm getting all these different alerts. <laughs> you guys, everything looks good on my end. Everything good on your end? Okay. Um, the you have these massive followers, and not everybody's ready right now for a mortgage, right? So there's there's this concept of of how do you stay contacted, connected? What's the nurturing strategy? Um, you know, so what is each of you? How are you kind of thinking about that? that which is probably 95% of your followers or more are in this state of not ready now. Right. Um, so maybe Rebecca, if you could just kind of share with us kind of how you think about that, that ongoing nurturing and, and connectivity. A lot of it is, is being available when they need me, right. Being available for questions, whether that's in the comments, whether that's, you know, they want to reach out for a, a call, you know, and I'll tell people, I'm like, look, it's, it's cool if you're, if you're not ready to buy and, you know, right now, right. Yeah. Let's still go ahead and have a call so we can talk through that. And from that standpoint, we can, I can establish that relationship and then just be there for them, you know, throughout whenever they have questions. Um, I also then for people that I do connect with and I do run retargeting ads on Facebook and Instagram. So whatever platform we connected on, they'll, they'll see me on the other ones. Um, and that just helps to, again, stay top of mind, be available. And, and they know, you know, that I'm, I'm there to deliver value without expectation of something in return. And that's where I think a lot of it comes from is just having a really strong connection with my community. And, um, and then from there, reply to comments, I think help a lot because one, obviously that's, you're answering directly what they want, but it's also saying, Hey, you matter to me. Your question matters to me. So let me, you know, let me give you your direct feedback. Love that. So man, you, you've got this small army, as you, as you said, I, I'm guessing you've got some pretty regimented processes around kind of follow-ups and touch points and connectivity. Maybe share a little bit of your, your, your background there. I think I want first. I don't want to like uh, intimidate anybody. The reason why I have the team that I have is because you know they help me along the way. But if you are a one man band or one man woman, you can still do it. But as you grow and grow, you just add people. That's all. You know, I just want to start out with that. So why right now? Yes, I do have someone that just manages our CRM. So when someone reaches through, the first thing we try to do is we try to do a soft mortgage credit pool, so we know they're serious. We see where they're at. Once we do the soft mortgage credit pool, we put them on a home search right away. Okay. Then you can release them out in the woods, right? You catch a fish, you tag it, you let it go swim down the stream. And then we keep doing more videos. I go live pretty consistently on, I have a live time. I go on, on Instagram and same thing on Facebook and YouTube, TikTok. I'm slowly becoming more consistent. I'm going live. Um, but I go live so people watch, we give out guides. So we give out a lot of information and we met, we send out text messages pretty often. We text them. Hey, you know, like we mass text if they respond, if they want to talk to one of our loan officers just for a question, cool. If they don't, they want to talk to me. They get into the round robin of my VIP calls, you know, Monday through uh, Monday through Friday from one to one to five. Awesome. Josh, what, so you must have a great process cause you're in freaking Maui right now. Well, well, while the machine is still kicking, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, to be honest with you, the first viral, we talked about it earlier, the first viral video is the video that went live. I mean, we had so many people contacting us. So I was actually in Hawaii when that happened. Um, and we learned really quickly that you can't not have a process and be doing this um, because we didn't have a process. We didn't, we didn't have a system. We had nothing at the time. So I had probably five different people within this, in the company I worked for following up with the text messages and the applications and trying to get through it all. Um, and I think it took me like three weeks to catch up. Wow. Um, but now that I'm here, um, you know, I think one of the most important things for all of us is our CRM. Um, we probably have great processes that so when these people come in, they're entered into the CRM and the CRM does some follow up for us. Um, but I think, again, men touched on this. When you're setting this up, you have to have the processes as far as how they can communicate with you, when they can communicate with you. So it's really important. You know, you've got a good calendar where people, if they need to talk to you, they can talk to you. 
Um, Rebecca touched on it as well, it, engaging, right? So when we're engaging on social media, we're getting more and more followers, we're getting more and more feedback. Um, so it can help us improve the process. Um, but for me, I think the, the process is pretty straightforward, right? A great CRM um, and then uh, some people that are willing to follow up for you and help you. Um, and it's, it's worked out pretty well. Love it. And again, varying, you know, degrees of processes. And, and I think what's important for the, the loan officer that's kind of thinking about dipping their toe in the water is you can start, start small and start with maybe, maybe you're going to work 16 hour days instead of 14 hour days to keep up, but that's a good problem to have. I think it's, it's better than the alternative, frankly, if you think about it. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit. This may be a little uh, self-serving, but I think it's super relevant for the times as well. Most of the content that I that I see that you guys are focused on and a lot of the other kind of influencers in the mortgage space is very relevant and topical to mortgage readiness. Totally makes sense. I, I'm curious how you guys are thinking about, because each of, each of your companies has partnered with FinLocker. You have your own kind of branded version of this financial fitness experience and, and you're in various stages of implementation. I'm curious um, how you're thinking about leveraging the, the, the tools in the app to maybe expand the, the net, widen the audience, widen the net, and then maybe capture a little bit more in the funnel. Let's, let's start with Josh. Yeah. Um, so obviously that's how you and I connected. Um, I was working with lead pops because I have a couple of different uh, systems that I use to help with the, the lead gen and the, the follow up. And they introduced me to you. And I think um, when we originally talked, I was working with a different app that was helping me um, give the people the ability to set goals, track their credit scores, create a savings account, do some of the stuff, but it wasn't as encompassing as I had hoped. So when we talked, um, for me, again, I'm focused on first time home buyers and people who are learning the, the process, learning how to become a homeowner. And uh, for a lot of them, uh, financial literacy is a big uh, hurdle because a lot of them haven't learned enough about financial literacy to be competent and feel comfortable becoming a homeowner, um, getting a mortgage. Um, so I was really excited when we, we got to talk and I got to look at FinLocker, I realized that it was a great tool that I can now add to our arsenal um, that we use to help guide the homeowner, potential homeowner um, in the process. So, uh, you know, whether it's using the, the credit analyzer, um, whether the, I mean, basically the mortgage readiness tools that are in FinLocker were just a no brainer for us. Um, and so I'm really excited to be able to add that piece uh, to what we're doing um, because like you'd mentioned, I'd say 95% of the people we're, we're dealing with on a daily basis aren't ready right now. Um, and a lot of them need some guidance. So having a tool that we can guide them and give them access to, to actually put steps in place. Um, Cause I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of you have a dream, right? And a dream written down is a goal. A, a plan to get to that goal is a day to day. Like, it's just, it makes sense for us. And it was just, it's going, it's really exciting. As you can tell, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> I love it, Rebecca. You've got the the YouSafe app, which I love the I love the branding from from your marketing <laughs> team at U Mortgage. There's so many ways to make it work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, how are you thinking about kind of the the YouSafe app and and how that's you know going to weave into your strategies for kind of promoting financial fitness and financial literacy? Yeah, the reason I, I like it is it's not it's not just for you know it's not just for first time homebuyers. It's not just for getting mortgage ready, because when it comes to personal finance, there's so many things that come into that, and it can be, you know, it, it it can be overwhelming. I think it's easy for us to forget because we do it every day. I mean, we you know we're completely fluent in it. I'm sure we talk about it in our sleep, but for a lot of people, it's it's extremely intimidating. Um, beyond just kind of the math, but just the the fear of making a wrong step. I think particularly when you know, the, the, you know, financial climates kind of like it is right now. So what I like about it is, yes, it is great for people who are working up to buying their first home. If they want to track their credit, if they want to run payments, if they even want to look at homes, but also for, you know, homeowners or really just anybody in general who doesn't want to keep an eye on their credit, who doesn't like checking the market, but it's also fun to be able to check, you know, your own value. And it really, what I like is that it encompasses a lot of really kind of those, you know, 
high level, hot button issues for people. How much do I have in my accounts? What's my credit? What is the market doing? How much will it cost me? It's just, it, it simplifies and really distills that down into one place. And it just, it delivers a ton of value. You know, it gives, it gives back to our communities, I think in a good way. I love it. So men, you're, you guys are kind of in our implementation mode. Uh, the brand that you all came up with is Wham. W-A-M, yeah. right? What's a mortgage? Yeah. Wham. Um, the Wham wallet. The Wham wallet. There you go. Yeah. Tell, tell us kind of how you're thinking about, um, you know, leveraging the, the, the tools and, and again, building kind of widening the net, if you will. Number one, don't, I'm going to tell my clients not to drive while they're using it. I try to drive and use it at the same time. I don't put a center <laughs> divider. You know, don't drive while you're trying to use it, but we use it. It worked really well. So as we, I said earlier, you know, uh, we tag all our followers. So we do a soft, uh, soft pool and we try to put them on their home search. So this is another tool to first to attract them. So when I do my buyer seminars, um, I have four real estate partners that I do work with. Outside of that, I try not to work with a lot of real estate partners because they want DU on the weekend. And you know how that goes, guys, trying to run DU for everybody. I, mean, I, only, I only want to keep five people happy, these four realtors and my wife, right? Outside of that, not keep anyone else happy. Um, so, you know, we put them on this tool and then we can track them a lot better. So when I do these buyer seminars with my realtors, also, when we do our webinars, especially in California, this new down payment system just came out, the care, the, the Dream Act, you know, the Dream one, uh, Josh. So when we do those uh, those seminars, we're going to get them to download the app so we can track their finances and know where they're at and fine tune them. Because, you know, our loan officers, you know, I want it to be easy for them to work the viewers. I want it to be seamless. And I think with the app, it'll make the conversion rate higher and the engagement higher. And we we are fine tuning serious buyers, you know, with, you know, combing through buyers. Sometimes you're combing through a lot to get a little. So we want to make the combing a little bit easier for loan officers because they got to work on conditions. They got to give updates and they got to call. I'm sure. And there's people are shopping them. So they're 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 you know, they're getting carpal tunnel typing up. Uh, what's it called? Uh, L.E.'s all day. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So I think this app is going to, you know just simplify things for them. I love it. Well, we're super excited about all, all the engagements and implementations. It's, it's been exciting for us to kind of have a first, uh, a first row seat, so to speak at, 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 at the show. So we've got a few questions that, that came in. I, um, there's a question, uh, from some, somebody asking about which CRMs you all are using. Um, Feel free to share. Feel free to say no, no, but it's your call. If you want to, if you want to share some of your tech stack, go ahead. I'll let you start, Rebecca. Uh, we use Follow Up Boss, which was actually built for realtors um, or primarily for realtors, but it works really well for the way that our team works. Um, just from the standpoint of having some support from LOAs, um, all of those kind of things, good notes, it, it has it all in one place. So that, that's what works really well for us because a lot of kind of my lead funnel coming in is either through landing pages or, uh, you know, a Calendly call. And so then that way it all comes into there and we're able to keep track, you know, and keep a, a complete kind of life of loan um, communication. So, so things don't, you know, don't fall through. And then obviously automations and things like that to, to make the process go smooth and stay in front of them. Awesome. Man, what are you guys, what are you guys doing? Uh, so for us, we use uh, two CRMs. One, before the loan, before the lead turns into, a, before they run credit, uh, we use Go High Level because we run our ads through Go High Level so we can monitor how our ads are performing. And then it was easier because we can round robin if uh, the lead a lot easier through uh, Go High Level. Once they're ready to run credit, then we, I'm like Rebecca, we use Follow Up Boss. Follow Up Boss is coming out with a mortgage version. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get on the affiliate program right now. <laughs> so they're coming out with the mortgage version, <laughs> but I like them because you can mass text message. You know, mm -hmm. instead of paying extra, I used to use Big Purple Dot, but you can mass text message and you can group text. So when they are ready to talk to a, a, a realtor, I group text them with the realtor, myself, and the loan officer to set the appointment for the realtor. You know, uh, and it makes it easier. So that's why I like it because you're not paying for all these extra uh, text message um, texts that go out. Love it. Josh, I know you, you talked a little bit about lead pops. Uh, what other technologies in so, the stack that you guys are using? So currently for our CRM, we're using daily AI up front for anything that's not um, in contract. Um, once they're in contract, they're going into Surefire. But the, the, the conversation started with you because we are in the process of transitioning over to Total Expert. 
Um, and that's kind of be where our CRM is going to be from start to finish. Everything will be housed there um, with the technology that we want to kind of stack into it um, because we like to try to use um, different other technologies that we can link up and total experts given us the ability to do that. Yeah. And as you know, we've got Finlocker has a native integration with, with total expert, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. looks like Josh fell into the pool there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, Last question. We got maybe two, two questions. I want to ask one from the audience and then I've got one that I kind of say for the end, I asked you all to share a nugget, but before we do that, there's a question that, that came in that talks about the typical originator is going to produce content that doesn't go viral or it won't go viral. Um, so can anyone kind of speak to how do you find success when your stuff's not going viral? What, what is, how do you define, you know, success if, if you're not going viral on video? I'll just okay. open it up. Anybody? Can okay. it. Yeah, please. Well, I think, I think a lot of times people really get, um, zeroed in on, you know, number of views, number of likes. And frankly, that's, I mean, that's the, that's the cheapest form of engagement that you can get, right? So what really matters is then what are you getting in the comments? Who's reaching out? You know, that type of conversion. And we don't want to lose sight of the, you know, the importance of what you might've put out. A video might've only done 500 or something like that. But if you think about those people in real life, if I filled a room with 500 people, I'd be really excited about it. And so not to discount or not to kind of really get wrapped up, (laughs) not to get wrapped up in, you know, sort of fake internet points of necessarily followers or even views. It's what kind of, you know, what, what is that ROI basically of the time? How much engagement are you getting? What quality of questions are you getting? So do that, um, focus on that, just focus on the consistency. You know, a lot of times people say it takes six to sometimes nine months, you know, to really get solid traction. And you have to be willing to put in that time and to show up without expecting to go super viral. Just it, it, it's a lot, it's a lot more luck than it is necessarily strategy. So yeah. getting started and perfecting your craft is, is, is where the, the secret sauce is. I love that. Josh, what, what would you say there in terms of, uh, you know, cause you probably started it well, Sounds like you had a you had a video that kind of went viral, kind of crazy. But uh, how about all the other stuff that's not going viral? How, where do you find success there? So, and this is something that I talk to a lot of people about. Um, you really can't focus on the vanity metrics. Um, if you're looking at the likes, the views, um, you're really going to get disappointed very quickly, and you may just give up. Um, so, one of the things I learned really early on was. Yeah, it's really cool to have that viral video. It's really cool to see the engagement go up. But at the end of the day, I gauge our success on the amount of uh, contact we receive from the consumer directly, whether that's an application with a soft credit pool, whether they're going out to the lead pops funnel and going and asking for more information on one of the products. Um, So really, I think that's where we've done a lot of our homework and we focus on the message so that it's driving more of that and not focus so much on the views, the likes and the comments. I love it. Man, anything to add on that? Yeah. Let me answer Brian's question really quick. Uh, so yes, go high level does, you can do group texting, but through go high, through uh follow up boss, since we work with other realtors, we can tap into their system and we can manage our metrics better. That's why when it's actually a deal, we rather work on, on it with a follow-up boss and not go high level. We use go high level to man- manage the, the metrics on how our ads are performing the quantity of, of people who are reaching through. So we know if we should hire more people, not hire more people, uh, how our concierge team is doing with engaging with people. So that's why we use two different CRMs. But going back uh, to the question, I, I agree with Rebecca and I agree with Josh. You don't manage the numbers. I did a video recently that didn't get a lot of views, but the people that did reach out were high quality uh, viewers that were ready to go. I did a video regarding... Um, you know, if, how to get a, if you're buying a home from a relative, we did the whole gift of equity thing. And not a lot of people, it, it didn't get that many views because not too many people hit the jackpot and they're going to buy a property from an in-law at a dirt cheap price. But the people who did reach through and we were able to do the, either a refinance or a gift of equity purchase. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, dude, that video tanked, but the, the ROI like Rebecca talked about was real. So it's not about going viral. I have an, another agent. She's uh, she has 20,000 on TikTok. It is a lot, but she's had 20,000 for a while. She's been in real estate for four years and she's crushing it over 10, 15 fundings a month on real estate 
with a small audience. It's just what you can get out of your audience. Um, I have four people. I'm not, I'm not selling a mentoring course. I don't mentor, but I just help these four people that were doing social less than 12 months and they don't have a big audience, but they're crushing it in their lead flow because whatever did got somewhat viral. When I'm talking about viral, I'm talking about like, instead of getting 10 views, they got 500 views. So it's not some crazy number, but you know, they were decent producers. So I'm like, why don't we put some money behind that and turn it into an ad? So the four people I'm working with, the video didn't go viral, but enough to tell, Hey, someone might like me. And now they are generating their own business. They don't rely on realtors anymore. And you know, they use realtors to help put their buyers in escrow. They're not using realtors to, to like, Hey, can you help me realtor? Can you send me a deal? Let me give you a deal. Like no realtor. Here's my buyers. The DU's ran, put them in the house, please. I love that. Flip the script, right? Flip the yeah. script. That is awesome. So when, when we were prepping for this, I'd, I'd ask you guys to think about one, one nugget that you each could share that kind of maybe without giving away all the secret sauce, right? That, that, that someone could take from this, this, uh, this 45 minutes to an hour that we spend together and, and maybe put it into practical use and help, help them get started on this journey. Men, let's, let's start with you. What would, what would be that kind of one, one thing you'd want to share with, with the audience? There's no excuse. <laughs> there really isn't. I'm 42 years old. I'm not that great at computers, but I figured it out. You think sometimes, oh, I'm too old. I'm too late to the game. Like, you know, Josh started a year ago. You know, me and Rebecca, we started a while back and we're still pushing through, even though it was growing or not growing. We didn't give up. Josh started later on in, in his life and still killing it. Two people I look up to a lot, the real Wayne Turner and Glenda Baker. You know, they're a little bit older than me and they are killing it. So don't put an age behind it. Don't put a timeline behind it. If you believe in it, do it and be consistent because something's going to happen. The only thing that separates you and us, we just didn't give up and we pressed through and we believed against all odds. Man, that's that's gold. Rebecca, what do you got? Well, similarly, as far as consistency is, is a big part of that and leading to consistency is being willing to, like you said, you know, just turn on your phone and get started. So you have to be willing to get bad, to get good. Um, you know, it can be tempting to, you know, maybe want to buy followers or, you know, whatever, just it's trying to like just drive leads, drive leads. And it really, I challenge you to grow this organically to really connect with and serve a community versus just looking at your follower count or whatever is, as you know, a commission check, you really want to make sure that you're, you're, you're connecting with them. And to do that, you have to make content that you like content that, that is unique to you. So you're bringing your whole self again, so people can know, like, and trust you. And that takes time, just like you wouldn't expect to go into a new city and all of a sudden all the realtors love you, you have to, you have to build up that trust over time, you know, by showing up authentically and uniquely. Awesome. Josh, take us home, man. Well, I mean, both of these guys put it in simple terms. And for me, I think, uh, you know, I, which we talked about it earlier about how there's so much information on these apps. If you really feel like this is something you can do or you want to do, um, it comes down to discipline. Um, and the discipline that you put forth into this is what you will get. So what you reap, you will sow. Um, and so, you know, I, I do a lot of, uh, you know, self-help. I, I, I watch a lot of stuff to help kind of guide me. Um, you know, motivation is based out of fear, but if you're disciplined and you're not trying to get motivated to do it and you're disciplined to do something, those actions that you take will give you what you are looking for. Um, and, like Min said, there's no excuses. Um, yeah, we're 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 not we're not Gen Zers. Uh, we're not millennials. Um, but we 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 put ourselves out there. And I think if you can put yourself out there and be authentic and then be disciplined, um, mm -hmm. you'll have a, a ton of success in whatever it is you do with this. I love it. You guys are awesome. This uh, I I can't tell you how much I learned from the session. Uh, I know that. The folks that were able to, to check this out live have some gold that they're taking back to their work day with them. Granted, it is St. Patty's Day. We forgot about that. Happy St. Patty's Day, everybody. Forgot my green beer too. Shoot. Um, but there, you know, there'll be this this podcast will kind of get some traction because there's going to be people coming back to this over and over. There was so so much great content. I appreciate the three of you taking time out of your immensely busy schedule to to share 
your story, your expertise with us here at FinTech Fridays. Um, love what you're doing. Keep crushing it. I'm, I'm learning from you guys every day. Uh, for everybody else, just hit the button, hit the red button. Let's, let's, let's see this thing grow. So thank you guys for joining today. And, and thanks everybody for tuning in. Thank thanks you. Thanks for having us, Brian.